welcome to a new vlog. Today is gonna be a little bit of a weird one. So I have decided that I want to participate in this literary marathon set by a Brazilian YouTuber and just content creator that I've been watching her things for around 10 years now. <laughs> her name is Melina Souza and her channel is Tea with Mel on YouTube. And she has just announced eight days ago this read it on that I think it's like the fourth or fifth year running. It's all about Halloween and there are prompts and it's uh, it starts on the 13th of October and it ends on the 31st. Today is the 12th of October. I'm not actually sure when this video is going to go up because there are other things that are going to be happening in these weeks of the readathon that I'm going to be filming for other videos. So I think this is just going to be probably a quite big long video of snippets pits of my reading throughout all of these days. Not only do we have reading prompts, but we also have activity prompts in this readathon. Let's start by sharing the prompts. Obviously, I don't need to read one book for each of these prompts. There are 13 prompts this year. Three of these books are going to be physical books. I'm going to be translating because um, this is all in Portuguese. The first prompt is witches and or magic. So books with witches or some sort of magic. The second one is paranormal elements. So ghosts, hauntings and spirits and haunted houses and that sort of thing. Third one is vampires. The fourth one is graphic novels. The fifth is short stories or novellas. The sixth is from another century. Then the next one is from this century. The eighth prompt is a gothic book. So it can be from any genre, but it has to have gothic elements. You then have that a book that is set during Halloween or it mentions Halloween. Tenth prompt is a book that has Halloween colors on the cover. The eleventh is a mystery. So it can be a cozy mystery or a thriller. And then the eleventh is an author that has died. And the last prompt is, it's kind of titled Spiderweb, but the idea is that it's a book that has been in your TBR or on your shelves for so long that you haven't gotten to it yet. So this is the time to make time to read that book. And yeah, those are all the prompts. And then we have, in terms of activities, we have to share your TBR, be it a photo, video, reels, this counts as that, actually. Then kind of make some food that is that goes with the theme of this video. You then have listen to Halloween songs. And uh, the fourth one is to decorate a little corner of your house Halloween-y. The last activity prompt is to watch films or animations or series that are themed around Halloween. I obviously have been doing a few of these already, so it's gonna be easy enough to just go through those. And now let's get on to the books. First of all, I have Frankenstein, which was going to be part of my Dark Academia video, but then I ended up not reading it. I literally have it physically. I also have it on my Audible plus on my Kindle. So I, I definitely, 
have a way to getting to this this season in case you don't know what this is about this is about a scientist so this is about a scientist that decides to play at god and bring a creature to life and the monstrous creation then runs away and this follows the journey that they go on from there i was quite shocked to discover that they go to the arctic in this story. So this book fits the prompt of gothic of another century and spiderwebs because I've been wanting to read it for a long time. It's like half five. It's really not late in October but we've been having a couple days. I mean I can show you the sky. It's you wouldn't be able to even see it because it's fully just grey. Um, the next book I have here is actually in this little book. There are three tales but I'm only going to read one. I am going to read The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. I haven't ever read any Edgar Allan Poe and I have had this book for at least a year now. It has three stories. Obviously The Telltale Heart, The Fall of the House of Usher and The Cask of Amontillado. So I shall be reading The Telltale Heart this autumn. This fulfills the prompt of short story but also author that has already died. I mean I could have given that one to Frankenstein but he has died as well. Oh no it does say horrifying tales of mystery, sickening madness and buried bodies. We then have to fulfill the graphic novel prompt. We have Snap dragon. But yeah, this is a little bit of a creepy graphic novel about a girl that ends up working for a witch that she thinks this witch is a fake witch. She doesn't think she is an actual real witch, but I think she discovers that there's, that there's more to it and that she personally has a connection to this witch that lives in her town. Uh, I then have a three more books. One of them is because I'm in the middle of and that is Enchanted to Meet You by Mac Cabot. So this is going to be a series called The Witches of West Harbour. I assume it's going to be all romances. First one follows Jessica Jess Gold as she is approached by this random guy one day in her store that tells her that she's the chosen one and she needs to kind of help this other girl realize that together they're supposed to save West Harbor. In this world, everyone has the capability to become a witch. You do have witch families. Anyone can train and learn to become a witch by themselves, which is what Jessica has done. You are following two perspectives, not only the main character and the main interest, but you're also going back in time and seeing kind of diary entries of our main character when she was in high school. So we'll see how it all comes into play. Enchanted to Meet You fits the prompt of witches slash magic and also the prompt of it's set in Halloween slash mansions Halloween. The next two I have one is a kind of young adult middle grade vampire story to fulfill the prompt of vampire and from this century and the other one I have is a mystery with supernatural elements and the cover is filled with Halloween colors. Those are the prompts they fulfill. The first book is How Not To Be A Vampire Slayer. So this book came out last year and I remember seeing it on Walter Stone and being like this sounds so good. It's about a girl that she uncovers Skeleton Manor and meets a young vampire called Sharptooth Shadow. Can she change her destiny and find a way to keep the peace between humans and vampires? But when Maggie discovers that she descends from a long line of vampire slayers, can she and Sharptooth overcome their history and save the forest and their friendship? The last one I have is the mystery that I was talking about that fulfills the supernatural elements, Halloween colors on the cover and mystery prompts and that is 
the Ghosts and Mrs. Muir. Technically the second in the Paws and Claws mystery series, but this is set around Halloween. So I definitely wanted to read this one. It's about the top pet friendly getaway in the United States is gearing up for a good Halloween until a spooky murder shakes the town to its core. Holly Miller doesn't believe in spirits, but the Sugar Maple Inn is filled with guests who do. The TV series in development Apparition Apprehenders has descended on Wagtail's annual Halloween festivities to investigate supernatural local legends. And Holly has her hands full showing the ghost hunters a scary fun time. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a good just kind of murder mystery set during Halloween time uh, in a small town. It feels like it's gonna be super cozy. So as you can see, all of the books I selected are not very long, they fulfill all the prompts and they all have a lot of Halloween-y feels. So I'm hoping to get through all of these and even some more especially cozy mystery books. I really feel like I want to read cozy mysteries and so yeah I'm really excited to get into all of these starting like right now and yeah apart from all of this I do want to obviously bake and cook and definitely go on nice cozy walks cuddle up in this corner of the sofa as always and read and have nice smelling candles. I did start a puzzle, an autumnal puzzle, a couple of days ago, so I'm a hundred percent going to be listening to an audiobook and doing that. So yeah, I have some nice cookies to eat with my endless stream of teas that I'm gonna be drinking. Let's start this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hi, I came in to tell you that tomorrow we're going to London. We have a couple of personal bureaucratic things to take care of. And then we're going to spend the day at Kew Gardens, which I've always wanted to visit during autumn time. Uh, we've only visited once before, and that was in spring, which was really lovely. Everything was flowering. It looked really green and luscious. But now it's gonna be a bit of the opposite. Things are starting to die. Hopefully it will be a little bit of a moody day so we can have some wind um, moving on the trees and that sort of thing. We'll, we'll see. But I'm really, really excited and we're waking up really early tomorrow. So I wanted to check in today as well as telling you how the books are going. I am around midway through both of the books I'm reading. Obviously one is an audiobook and that is The House Witch and the other one is Enchanted to Meet You by Mac Habit, uh, which I'm reading on Kindle. Let's start with Enchanted to Meet You. Enchanted to Meet You has been a really fun book. It has two timelines. So you follow our main character as she's in high school, making a few mistakes as is expected and learning magic. And then you follow her as an adult when she's figuring life out, but she hasn't had a romance in a while and something quite dramatic happens at the start of the book where she's told she's a chosen one. So she's dealing with that and this new hot guy in town that surprise, surprise, she's gonna have a romance with. It's a little bit predictable. It follows a few classic tropes. They're already lusting after each other. You do have not only the past and present perspective, but you do follow the guy as well for not like every other chapter, but a few chapters. Really loved 
watched The Princess Diaries by Matt Cabot, I thought her humour was really good and her kind of satire of the world of teenagers was really good. And I'm feeling like this book is just a little bit of a copy of every other witchy romance that I've read. But I am loving The House Witch. It's just a slow, heartwarming, good time. The relationship between the characters are just lovely. You really see them develop throughout every interaction. It is a relatively long book, so for now not much has happened, but you do really follow through with these characters and you even see side characters develop slowly. It's so nice. I feel like maybe the writing is not the best, but everything is really well done. You have all of the characters, not only our main character, you follow a lot of characters through the perspective of our main character. There are a few chapters that are from other people's perspective and you see all of these side characters develop with time and learn new things. There is a war brewing in the background. You do have a romance slowly unraveling. You actually have have had at least one chapter, yes, one chapter from the cat's perspective. I'm really enjoying this book and it's a lot more complex than what I was expecting, but at the same time, it's still quite light. I'll stop talking for now. I think I've already been speaking for like five, six minutes and I need to pack up and get a move on because tomorrow we're leaving really early. I'll see you tomorrow in London. with us as we embark on our autumnal escapade through Kew Gardens. I couldn't help but be swept away by a gust of excitement as leaves swirled and twirled in the air, setting the stage for a day of seasonal exploration. With every step, the ground beneath us transformed into a natural carpet of greens, reds, oranges, and browns. The satisfying crunch of our feet accompanied the vibrant colors overhead. Nature is celebrating its grand finale, and I eagerly joined in. Within the Temperate House, the largest Victorian greenhouse in the world, my journey took an unexpected and unlightening turn with the Queer Nature Exhibition. As I wandered amidst the greenery, the exhibition unfolded, revealing the diverse ways in which nature finds ingenious methods to reproduce and adapt to its environment.
reflecting on the parallels between the exhibition and human behavior, I couldn't help but marvel at the irony. In our attempts to categorize and define, we often fail to acknowledge the fluidity and complexity inherent in our own existence. The richness of diversity displayed in nature's reproductive strategies stood as a testament to the beauty found in differences. A stark contrast to the human inclination to categorize and define. At the treetop walk canopy, the clear view of the parakeets in action added a new layer to the experience, transforming their melodic chirps into a visual symphony. It was as if the trees themselves were alive, animated by the presence of these feathered residents. The experience emphasized the interconnectedness of life, a testament to the delicate balance that sustains Kew Gardens, and by extension, our shared natural world. I would love to say that it was an amazing experience, but I walked right back down after one flight of stairs. So these are my partner's thoughts on his time among the trees. of the Arboretum was undoubtedly the picturesque lake adorned by a graceful bridge, a scene straight out of an autumnal painting. The water mirrored the fiery hues of the surrounding trees, transforming the pond into a liquid canvas of reds, oranges and golds. Wandering through the Arboretum, I lost myself in a kaleidoscope of colours and the calling of the crows. I found myself lost in the simple beauty of nature's transformation. Stepping into the water lily house, we immediately were enveloped in a cocoon of mist and warmth, a stark contrast to the crisp autumn air we had just left behind. As we adapted to the climate within, wiping away the mist from our lenses and adjusting to the warmth, a breathtaking scene unfolded. As we wandered amidst the giants of the palm house, we noticed an unusual opportunity. The top of the palm house was open, beckoning us to venture to a higher level, typically concealed from public view. 
The prospect of exploring this hidden realm filled us with a sense of quiet excitement. From this elevated vantage point, the intricate details of the palm fronds became more pronounced, their textures and patterns captivating our attention. Reluctantly, we made our way back towards central London, bidding farewell to the botanical haven that had enchanted us with its autumnal beauty. I'm going to do a sign off here because this is going to be a long vlog. I might have to separate it in two and this is kind of the perfect place. I really hope you enjoyed this first part of the readathon. I have not read as much as I wanted, but I have read quite a bit and I hope it's not weird that this is coming in November. <laughs> I've been feeling so much recently that I haven't had time to edit and post things. So it might be that all of my October goodness is coming in November. But yes, let's finish up this vlog. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see each other next time. Bye!